Before continuing further, make sure you know how to analyse proportionality relations, draw free body diagrams, apply Newton's first and second laws of motion, and apply the equation for dynamic friction. Brooke, who is already at the top, urges Lotus to hurry up and give her a boost. Lotus provides a gentle push of 20 newtons right. But Brooke doesn't move because there is too much friction between the rug and slide. Remember, friction is a type of contact force that is parallel to the surface of a solid. We can also classify this as static friction because the objects do not slide past each other. Next, Lotus pushes twice as hard, but Brooke remains still. Static friction has the same magnitude as the net applied force because it tries to prevent any sliding motion. Both forces increase at the same rate until a maximum amount of static friction is reached, 162 newtons left. If Lotus pushes a little harder than this value, she will overcome static friction. And when Brooke starts moving, dynamic friction kicks in. To summarise, static friction tries to prevent motion. Its strength changes to match the net applied force. On the other hand, dynamic friction opposes motion. It has a constant strength, which is independent of the applied force and sliding velocity. Let's consider the formula for static friction. Fs is the maximum magnitude of the static friction force in newtons. Mu s is the coefficient of static friction, which is a number that is greater than or equal to zero. A small value occurs when the two surfaces are slippery, but a large value means they are grippy. Finally, n is the magnitude of the normal force in newtons. This formula shows that the maximum amount of static friction is proportional to the coefficient of static friction and the normal force. Doubling either factor will double the maximum amount of friction. Note that your formula sheet might represent some or all of these terms using different symbols. Remember, the normal force is always perpendicular to a surface, but friction is parallel. In this example, gravity gives the crate a tendency to slide downhill. Static friction pushes it uphill to prevent any sliding motion. But if someone tries to push it uphill, static friction will point in the opposite direction to prevent motion. As mentioned earlier, this equation gives you the upper limit for static friction. In most cases, the actual force is smaller because it only needs to oppose the net applied force. This brings us to another version of this formula. The less than or equal to sign reminds us that static friction opposes the applied force until it reaches a maximum value, which is given by mu s times n. Finally, static friction only applies when you have two solids. It is not valid if one substance is a liquid or gas. Let's try a sample question. Pause the video to read it by yourself. As usual, we start by copying the key details given in the question. Our task is to find the coefficient of static friction, so we make it the subject of this equation. We already know the maximum amount of static friction, but we aren't given the normal force. However, we can calculate the weight force by multiplying mass and gravity. Since Brooke is stationary, the vertical forces are balanced and the normal force is 735 newtons up. Hence, the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.22.